Hello, this is Mr. McGovern. This is the 11th video in the Simple Harmonic Motion series, and here we're going to work through an exam problem. Um, so this will be a bit of a longer video as I just work through a whole question. So this exam problem is from the 2020 paper. You can download it if you want and try it at some stage, either before you watch the video, or you can watch the video and see how I do it and then try it as well. So it starts off and we have uh, Serena sitting on a swing in the playground. It's three meters long. This makes me think of a pendulum, and they ask me to show that the period of the swing is 3.5 seconds. So whenever I'm asked a show question, they're basically saying, what is the period of the swing? But I'm going to tell you the answer is 3.5 seconds. Hopefully you get that as well. You can't actually use 3.5 in your working. You can only show that you can get to 3.5 at the end. So a pendulum has, on our formula sheet, has a time period of 2 pi um, root L over G. Just put the numbers in. L being 3, G being 9.81, and that spits out 3.50 seconds. So I showed it, clearly showed it, and the marker would give me full marks for that. That would be an achieved question. Okay, so in this picture, it looks a little bit different. Serena has gone from sitting to standing and explain how the period of the swing will be affected if she stands up while it's swinging. So the only thing I know about spring periods is, is the time period is given by 2 pi L over G. Now here's the trick. Even though the swing seems the same length, the length we use is not the length of the rope or the length of the swing. But it's the distance from the center of mass of the things that's on the end of the swing, which is Serena, and the top of where it's tied off. So when Serena stands up, her center of mass gets closer to the top. That means that her length decreases, and because t is proportional to square root length, if this L goes down, then the time period is going to go down as well. So there's my answer. All right, C gives us a graph. It says the graph below shows that of the restoring force, F, on Serena, against Y, which is the horizontal displacement of Serena from her equilibrium position. Explain how the information in the graph shows that the swing is an example of simple harmonic motion. So just as a reminder, restoring force is a fancy word for total force in a um, simple harmonic motion system. So first of all, what does this graph say? When I look at this graph myself, what do I see out of it? Well, I see that when Y gets bigger, so when Y goes to the right, I notice that the force gets more negative. Okay, This has a negative gradient. Normally, the graphs I'm familiar with, um, Y would get, well, something gets bigger and, and the other value gets bigger as well, and they're positive gradients. But this is clearly a negative gradient graph. So then how does that tie into my definition of a simple harmonic motion? So our definition back on, I think, about video 2 for simple harmonic motion was that the total force is proportional to the displacement. So that means as the displacement gets bigger, the force gets bigger. And this is what's happening in this graph. Even though one of them gets negative, that's still getting the value of it's getting larger. So this is showing that our graph is a straight line. When displacement gets bigger, force gets bigger, shown with a straight line graph. The second part of our definition was that the force is towards the equilibrium, which is the opposite direction of the displacement. As the swing moves away from the equilibrium, the force is back towards the equilibrium. And this is showing that the gradient of our graph is negative. So we've looked at the two parts of our um, definition of simple harmonic motion and explained both of them. One in that the graph has got a straight line, the gradient straight, or the gradient's constant, sorry. And the second is that the the gradient is negative. So that one would have been a merit question. And this last one's a, an excellence question. So Serena swings from end A to end B with an amplitude of 1.5 and a period of 3.5. Use the reference circles below or otherwise calculate the velocity of Serena and the swing when she is 0.5 meters from the end of B. So as I've said before, reference circles are a way of solving um, simple harmonic motion, but so are the wave equations that I end up using. So instead of using the reference circles, we're going to ignore them, 
and we're going to do it the way that, that I've taught you in the videos. And that is, we first of all have to write down our four things. Our important information, which is amplitude and angular frequency, our coordinate system, our graphs, and then choose our families of equations. Let's do that one at a time. So we've been given A, amplitude 1.5. Omega rotational frequency we have to work out, which is given 2 pi f, but we also know that f is 1 over t. So um, these are all in my formula sheet. That's how I got them. So omega is 2 pi over the time period, which I have is 3.5 seconds, and I get 1.8 radians per second. So I can put that into my information. Got all my important information, tick that off. The next is my coordinate system. So I've got a, I've just sketched a little girl on a swing here and see that A is starting from the left and B is on the right. I've decided to call A positive and B negative and zero is always in the middle. Okay, doesn't matter what you choose as long as you're consistent. I've got both my graphs here. A sine graph starts in the middle and a cos graph starts at one of the extremes. I definitely have this girl starting at one of the maximum displacements, not in the middle. So... I have a cos graph and then I use that with my families of equations which family starts with the cos it's the bottom one so that's the, the equations I'll be using um, I don't need acceleration so when I move on to the next one you'll see I'll just kind of crop that off the picture so these are the two uh, the displacement and the velocity from that bottom family like I said I dropped acceleration all right so let's go back to this, the question again. She says, use uh, reference circles or otherwise, calculate the velocity of Serena. So there on my right, I've got a velocity equals negative a omega, which I've got now, that important information. Sine omega, got that as well. And then little t. Now little t is the time she's been swinging for. It's not the time period. It's not the 3.5 seconds. In fact, I don't have how long she's been swinging for when she gets to 0 0.5. Okay, so I want to find that velocity. I don't have that time. However, we can use the first equation to find time. Now this is a bit more difficult than we've done before because you, normally in the first equation we would be given the time and we can work out the displacement. Here we've been given the displacement, which is 0.5 meters from an end. We have to rearrange it to work out time. So this is my rearrangement of that. Um, I'm not going to talk through it because I, I just I might complicate you. Um, but you should pause this and see if you can do this rearranging to find what t is given all the other values. Once I've rearranged it, I've got to put everything into the value. I have a, that's easy. I have omega, that's easy. What's my y? Now, she said she's 0.5 meters from the end. Here, back to my coordinate system. 0.5 meters from end b is, is not 0.5 meters from the middle. It's 0.5 meters from the end, right? which means that her actual position, given that her the amplitude is 1.5 meters, from 0 all the way to B is 1.5 meters, therefore the distance from 0 to where she's going to be at this point is going to be 1 meter. So the 1.5 subtract the 0.5. And that's why I've got 1 meter in here. I've also got negative because it's on the B side. It's on the negative side. So that negative goes into that. We rearrange. And that gives me out 1.28 seconds to get to that point there. If I didn't put the negative in, I would not get that um, right number. So, back to the overall plan. We wanted to find velocity by using the equation on the right, but we didn't have the time she'd been swinging for to get to this 0.5. We used the first equation, rearranged it to find that time, and we've now found it, 1.28 seconds. Now we can just throw it into this equation. All my values, A we know is 1.5, omega 1.8, the time is now 1.28. That gives me velocity of negative 2.01 meters per second. So what the heck does negative velocity mean? Well, negative, remember, in our coordinate system, hasn't changed, negative points to the right. So that means at that point, she is swinging to the right, or she's pointing to the right. So that's a, an exam problem. I know part D was, was quite complicated, um, but enough practice if you're aiming for those excellence problems and you should be able to do something like that. That's the end of that um, this series. I might do an extra sort of bonus video on reference circles um, for students who come from another school where they're taught how to use a reference circle.